Bonjour, YouTube. Today I am very excited. I am nervous. I really want to deliver the right information. I've done my homework, so let's get started. On November 8th, the documentary by Rainer Holzemer, Margiela in his own words, debuted, premiered at the SBA, the School of Visual Arts in New York's theater during the documentary festival. Martin obviously was not there, but I got a sweet note by a former Mason Martin Margiela member who sent me this poster. I was confused. He said, oh, this is a little gift. We'll have to figure it out on your own. And of course, I was like, okay, I, I see one name. I see one name. I, I don't speak German. I did a quick Google search and lo and behold, I learned that the Kunstel Bielefeld, the Bielefeld's art gallery in Germany, was going to have an exhibition with Martin Magiela's artwork. And I was shook. Of course, I had to hunt for the information and I got in contact with the museum. I spied on some people's Instagram that were present in the exhibition and uploaded some sort of um, snippets because photos were forbidden. There is a book that is finally on my hands. Uh, we're gonna talk about it all, like official information. I got some photos that I was not allowed to share because they were personal. Ah, <sighs> that dog. Oh, fuck that dog. It's been two months of going crazy to, to see and to understand what has Martin been doing for the past 10 years. I knew some things I heard from former members and from you know, information you get here and there, but not official. It's official. The exhibition's name is Leon qui marche, Der Körperung des Bergen. I hope I'm saying this right. The Walking Man and Embodiment of Volume. At first, because I was trying to connect all of the dots, so I did a quick Google search and there's a Giacometti's sculpture that's called Leon qui marche. And there's this photo of Giacometti walking down the rain in Paris, pulling his trench up to cover himself from the rain. And that clicked with Martin Margiela's fall winter 2005 trench. So I was like, mm, is there a correlation? Spoiler alert, it's not. The exhibition revolves around Rodin's Leon qui marche, which was groundbreaking sculpture that celebrated the bizarre, the weird, the not perfect, the abstract, visually contradictory. And that's how Rodin declared a new paradigm, the unfinished, the imperfect. If we go back to Martin Margiela's work as a fashion designer, he embodied those values. And that's why his fashion spoke to a certain kind of woman, not a physique. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? So from the book, I can tell they knew Martin's work was something groundbreaking, worthy of being on the back of the cover. There are four, if not five, Martin's pieces. We go all the way to the back, almost. This is the catalog of pieces that were shown in this exhibition. The first one is Top Coat, a nail. This was created in 2011. Then we've got on Titel, which is untitled, the hat on the back of a frame of a, of a canvas. We have Tondi, which is four undies on a round frame. Last, but certainly not least, we've got pet. Let's try to decipher what this all means. This book is in German, and I don't speak German. I understand the very, very mere nothing. Here's this with a reference to Warhol, a bit more text with a illustration by Andy Warhol. 
Wolfgang Tillmann's photo that inspired Tommy. We have a bit of historical references. Martin taking a Clarence ad and then adding into it, recycling and making art. The official photos on the book of the nail, top coat of the hat, Tombi, the underwear, and pet. I loved that they added the bottom and how it was constructed. Let me tell you, this gave me serious vintage Mise and Martin Margiela vibes. I mean, don't blame me. I have all of these uh, references. So I did my research and I've got all of my translations. So it's confirmed. Martin was there, but he had already shown his works in a small gallery before. But in Bielefeld, he walked around the exhibition, which was almost finished when he came. He then chose the places where he wanted to show his works. It was a good decision to let him look himself in order to find the right places. His works really look good where he put them. After digging into the Kunstel Bielefeld's website, you can see where the pieces are shown, which was Martin himself who took that decision. This is what he told me. Martin, he plays with art history and his fashion background, I think. Take pet, for example, a cone covered in artificial fur. The fur refers to Merthe Oppenheimer, the artist who made famous cup from fur, for example. And fur is something used in fashion, of course. Or the tombi, men's underwear arranged in circles and put on the wall. Again, underwear refers to Margiela's fashion background. And here it is recycled to a piece of art, just as Margiela recycled fabric when he designed fashion. And then, art history again. Tondi wears more circular shaped pictures made in the Renaissance showing scenes from the Bible. For instance, the Clarence piece is an advertising photograph showing a naked woman that Margiela painted over so that the body becomes a foot in a high heel shoe. So this is a kind of recycling something Margiela found again. Now let's go to the book, the official information. Let's start with Pet. There is a strong similarity to Merit Oppenheimer's object. A fur-covered cup, saucer, and spoon shook the art world during the 1930s. The movement around this era was surrealism. For Merit, she really came to think of women used as objects and muses. And in this piece, there is a strong sexual connotation to cunilingus. And when you see Martin's pet, it's a cone, which is normally plastic and red, and it's a worn sign. But now it's furry and it's called pet. I think it's in English, like something you pet, like a little something that you want to hold on to. And even though it's a warning and it's like stoic because it's there standing, there is a sexual phallic connotation in a male figure. Pfft, mind blown, right? Red is Martin Margiela's favorite color. It's easily found on his painted top coat, a color that is ultimate beauty. But early Warhol drawings come to mind that focus on male genitalia. It is the most erotic part of the body, the one on which the clothes bulge. As with Warhol's, Margiela's art is full of ritual veils and revelations of male erogenous body zones. The tondi from Margiela, taken further, lead us to the delicate lines reminiscent of Warhol's, like Hand in Pocket from 1956. He does not regard white, gray, and black as true colors, but as mere tones. The covering of materials with color is a significant feature in Martin Margiela's entire oeuvre. The layer of white paint creates the illusion of a neutral canvas, while white also stands for the strength of fragility and the fragility of passing time, as can be seen again and again in the text by Barbara Binken. In fact, Margiela's deep interest in aging processes and the variability of time in his works of art, as for example in the in which Margiela drapes large white cotton underpants 
for older men with a degree of perfection and harmony. It stretches and in the shape of a rotondi, of a rondi, as in a classic tondo, will model the material according to the construction of the material, which in turn reinforces the illusion of the presence of a phallus. All of this makes one think of the same illusion. Photographs of white underpants inside the Rolling Stones album Sticky Fingers from 1971. The phallus is neither a symbol of masculinity and dominance for Warhol nor for Margiela, but rather a pose, a decorative gift, in the sense of auto-domination of the masculine. In his sculpted version, untitled, of Fenner's wonderful painting, Le Panier de Faces de Bois, Margiela decorated the fruits of Cardan, the subtle eroticism also remains here. In Pet is a traffic cone, neither an object that he found on the streets of Paris. Margiela left on the evening of his label's 20th anniversary show. Before that, there was practically no time to work on anything other than his fashion. The painting of the black high-heeled shoe also remains a one of Margiela's defining role models, both in his fashion and in his heart. See whom he spent his time at art school discovered. The way Warhol played the media was impressive for Margiela. Even if Margiela, in sheer con to Warhol, refused to take on a celebrity role, Margiela refused public appearances just as he refused to be photographed or to give interviews. All attention should be paid to his fashion. Margiela still maintains his distance from the press and the public to this day. On the occasion of the 20th anniversary show in 2009, it was not the person Martha Margiela, but the fashion house who answered the questions asked by Joseph Kusuth for the interview magazine, which was once founded by Warhol in the flat. Plural answer style that had been used over the years. Even if, while we do not normally refer to specific people to explain our work and intentions, we cannot deny that the work of some artists definitely has an impact on us or is a source of inspiration, whatever it may be called. Andy Warhol's work, but also he as a person, undoubtedly had an extremely stimulating effect on us. Margiela himself was enthusiastic about Warhol's shoe illustrations from the 1950s. So it seems that Warhol has indirectly contributed to Clarence's fashion and art in the summer of 1993. Martin Margiela took part in the June exhibition at the Tadas Ropa Gallery in Paris, which opened in 1990 in the Marais. The much noticed exhibition, curated by Oliver Sam and Aileen Flies, the two founders of the cult magazine Purple Prose, also showed works by the artist. Dominique Gonzalez Forrester and Wolfgang Tinmans, who was still to be discovered. It was one of the favorite photos, most important assistants, and today a well known fashion designer, Wolfgang Tinmans, namely Lutz, or Lutz Hell, one of Margiela's, and introduced Tillmans to each other. Tillmans introduced Lutz Hell to Martin. If you don't know, Lutz designed the AIDS t shirt and he was the knit designer for Margiela. There's a part that says Mood ist kein Kunst. In 1993, one of the few photographic postcards from Martin appeared in a Belgian newspaper with the title Mood ist kein Kunst. That's in German and in Flemish it's Mood ist kein Kunst, which is fashion is not art. In the title of this article, in which doubt about fashion plays a role, his name was misspelled, namely Margiela, as an unconscious promise. Margiela left the world of fashion in 2009 and started working with art again. Left the world of fashion forever? However, Martin is shown in the Bielefeld Art Gallery with works that relate to his artistic beginnings and connect him with his deep passion of making art. Finally, this exhibition shows for the first time works by Martin, who has shaped generations of fashion-conscious people to this day by actually creating his embodiment of the ideas of surreal worlds as fashion for anyone who understands bodies as carriers of art. The catwalk of fashion shows represents the world in which its avant-garde marched from season to season. 
Martha shaped this stage of extreme publicity for two decades like no other. Remained quasi anonymous even as a person, he is considered the great unknown of the scene. His label, MMM, Maison Martin Margiela, became cult and culture. Martin has been working privately with pictures for about 10 years, which is now being exhibited in Bielefeld for the first time thanks to the help of Chris Delcon, who also wrote the accompanying text. Round of applause. So, Martin is Belgian. For me, his anonymity really reminded me of René Magritte, uh, the bales covering the faces. I always thought his art was a bit surreal. It's interesting seeing his work being very similar to this movement. This exhibition is still running. It will end on the 8th of March of 2020. A rumor has it Martin is working on his first solo exhibition in Paris for this year. So probably, I know these pieces are on loan for the Kunstadt Bielefeld and they will be sent back to him and probably they will be shown in Paris soon or New York. Who knows? Uh, finally, answers have been given. He has finally put the nail on the coffin for his work as Maison Martin Margiela. It's not a coincidence that the day before showing his work, the documentary in his own words, as a response to the We Margiela documentary, which I, I find is very important that he gave some insight to his process and Margiela in his own words documentary was filmed during his time in Galliera basement working on the exhibition the Margiela Galliera that was shown last year in Paris. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, as a big Martin Margiela fan, I, I'm not gonna lie, it made me so happy to know that he was doing something that he wanted to do. No strings attached, sharing with us mere mortals his work and knowing that he's okay. If you have more insights and you've got your own interpretation of his work, please share. So yeah, until the next one. Ciao.